Welcome back everybody. Okay, we have a lot to cover in this video. I'm redoing this mid-century dresser. You're gonna see some scraping, removing, veneer, a hurricane, and of course the aftermath of the hurricane. I'll be mixing my own stain for this piece using a new color from Fusion. I need to make some replacement drawer slides and Nacho gets a sombrero, so really there's nothing here not to love. This piece needs some attention on the inside and the out, and I can't wait to show you what I do with this piece in the end. Stay tuned! My name is Angie, and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint, and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. So as always, we're going to start by having a quick look at this piece. This was a Facebook Marketplace find, and she's a bit rough. The majority of the finish is scratched and worn. There's some watermarks and areas where the finish has actually gone completely. I do believe these are the original handles, but unfortunately we are missing one of the knobs, which kind of throws a wrench in things. And I'm not really sure what this is at the back. This is built on a platform base, but it's a little bit rough as well, so I'm going to be removing that. The construction of this piece is actually walnut veneer over plywood, which is something I don't see very often. Usually it's over pressed wood or some sort of solid wood like poplar. The drawers themselves need a little bit of love. They need to be completely sanded down and cleaned out. This is a Canadian made piece and it's not super high end, but I like the look of it. One thing's for sure though, I have my work cut out with this piece. I start every piece off the same way by pulling up the drawers and this very first drawer I can see that something is a bit weird with it so I'm going to pull it out, have a peek and I can see right away it is missing the wooden rail guide that the drawer sits on so that will have to be replaced. All the other drawers have rails intact, but this top one, even though it has a rail, was also moving around a lot, and it took me a minute to figure out why, but you'll see that later on. The next step, though, is to get this piece completely cleaned out. I'm going to start by vacuuming, and then I'll use a degreasing cleaner. This little brush is great for sweeping dirt out of cracks and crevices that the vacuum can then pick up. And always be careful when you're cleaning out dresser drawers. It seems you'll always find sewing needles or nails, bobby pins, sharp things. Just be careful. So when it comes to vintage hardware, I often like to reuse what comes with the piece. Even if it's not a style I like, sometimes I'll paint it to make it more appealing. But in this case, I think I'm going to scrap the original hardware altogether. Not literally scrap it, I will save it in my stash for another piece. One of the knobs was missing anyway, so I was going to have to replace those to begin with. Looking at the bottom of this piece, it is supported by this plywood base. That's not the end of the world, but I want to raise this off the floor a little bit higher, so I'm going to be removing that base and adding some legs. I know a very popular thing to do right now is to build new bases, and I've done it a few times and I love it, but one thing to keep in mind is that some of these pieces are very heavy, especially those big, chunky ones from the 1970s. You need to make sure that whatever base you're building or legs you're putting on is going to be able to support the full weight of the piece. The finish on this piece is so bad that I'm opting to just use my scraper. It's going to be the fastest and cleanest way to do this. I could have used a chemical stripper, but to be honest, this is way faster. Now I did notice some small dark spots. That's usually water damage. Sometimes I have to use oxalic acid to treat it and remove it, but we'll see how this looks after I do a light sanding. There's a big problem on the front here with the edge banding, and while I could have patched it or used wood putty there, I'm actually going to be stripping it off all the way back until the point where it connects, and then I will cut it off.
The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to be painting the base and the sides of this piece and there's a big strip on the bottom that's a little bit wider than the edge banding on the top so I'm going to steal it from the bottom and repair the top with it and then I'll use wood filler to smooth this part out and it'll be painted anyway. And even though this bottom piece is torn in a few spots anyway, it's still wider than the top was, so I'll be able to get a good repair out of it. But before I do that, I'm going to take the finish off of the drawers, and I'm gonna be using a scraper just like I did the top. While I was doing this part, I had some time to think about what I wanted to do with this piece, and I knew that I was going to do a paint wood combo, but I didn't really know exactly how that was going to look. What I decided to do is paint the portion of the drawer faces that basically are little squares. And then the larger portion of the wood grain will remain wood grain. It usually kills me to paint over wood, especially if it's in good shape, but for this piece, it's just gonna be part of the design and I'm leaving a lot of it wood anyway, so I just have to get out of my own head and just accept that. <laughs> But to be honest, I had bigger things to think about because as I was starting this piece, there was something brewing. Hurricane Fiona was barreling up the coast and just about to slam right into Nova Scotia. She hit us late in the evening and the overnight hours were the worst. It was still quite windy the next day, so we gave it an extra day before we started the cleanup. Most of Nova Scotia was without power, and some people, I believe, are still waiting to get connected. We were extremely lucky where we were. Northern Nova Scotia into Cape Breton got way worse than we did, and my heart goes out to everyone in PEI, and especially Newfoundland and Port Basque, where they were absolutely hammered and there was unfortunately some loss of life. Having to pick up branches and debris around the yard seems trivial compared to the footage that we've seen recently in Florida and the Carolinas with Hurricane Ian, but this was still a big event for us. We do get hurricanes here in Canada, but we usually get a tropical storm every year or every other year and a major storm every few years. I know you guys were quite worried so I just wanted to kind of show you what we had to deal with. It took pretty much a whole day to do the initial cleanup and then another day to chop everything down. The fishies in the pond fared okay and even some of the local wildlife. Like this mama and her baby. And I had to laugh at a couple comments from viewers who told us to protect Nacho at all costs. So I want to show you how Nacho spent his hurricane. <laughs> All right, back to business. I'm using wood filler here on this bottom where I removed that strip of veneer that I borrowed for the top. Like I said, the sides and the base of this is going to be painted, so I'm using the wood filler to fill in any small gaps between the plies. The drawers are also a bit dark and dingy, so I'm going to sand them out completely with my Surf Prep 3x4 electric ray sander. I do still use Mr. DeWalt, but on projects like this, where I need to get right into tight corners, this sander is perfect. I'm using a fairly fine grit here. I believe this is a 120 grit. If you're considering one of these sanders, don't forget you can use my code to automatically save yourself 10% off your order. 
I will link the information down below if you want to have a peek. I'm switching now to 180 grit. That is the lowest grit I need here. I've already removed the finish, so all I'm doing is smoothing out this walnut veneer. There were a few spots on both the drawers and the top that had chips in the veneer, so I used some walnut wood filler to fill them. And I'll go back and sand them smooth later. And speaking of sanding things smooth, my wood filler down here is now dry. So I'm using the same 180 grit pad to smooth that out. Looking at the frame, you can see that the wood here is a bit rough. It's not sanded perfectly smooth. So I just went in and tried to minimize some of those little splinters that were sticking up. And now I can get ready to add that piece of edge bending to the top. I'm actually going to be adhering it with epoxy instead of wood glue, just making sure to apply it evenly and I had just enough mixed up. Now, like I said earlier, this new piece has some tatters and tears as well. That's okay because it's a little bit wider than what it's going on. So I'm just gonna get it in place and then I'll use a blade to trim it all back once it's dried. I'm going to clamp this down to dry and huge thank you to one of my awesome viewers who sent me some new clamps. You can never have too many. While that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and seal this section of the drawer. Now this might seem a little bit counterproductive because I am going to be painting this section, but the reason I'm sealing it first is I don't want someone down the road if they decide they want to redo this piece to have to pick paint out of the wood pores. It is no fun. So I'm doing a proper seal here before I paint. You can also accomplish the same thing using shellac. Sanding down the top of a piece is always my favorite part. I love, love, love this walnut wood grain. And while it wasn't applied the best in some spots, like you can actually see some of the seams where the two pieces of veneer butt up against each other on the drawer faces, it's still worth keeping as much as possible. I am gonna be painting the sides and the base, like I said, but the whole top and most of the drawer faces are going to be beautiful, warm, rich walnut wood grain. Just like the drawers, there were a few little spots that had chips, so I went ahead and filled those. While those were drying, I went on and did a light scuff sanding on the sides, and then I actually used a little bit of that vinyl sealer on that as well before doing another light scuff sanding. And the reason for doing that is that that first scuff sand was just evening out the finish. Unless I'm worried about bleed through or adhesion, I don't normally prime when I use Fusion Mineral Paint, the darker color especially. If you do a very light first coat called a tack coat, you generally get extremely good adhesion. And it's a bit of a battle between the furniture refinishers because some people swear by priming. And I always say, if you're not sure if you should prime or not, just prime, totally fine. Better to prime when you don't have to than to not prime when you should have. Oh, and I also used that sealer on that bottom section there where I used the wood filler so that I would have a nice smooth uniform finish. This part's kind of funny because you can actually see my hesitation when it comes to putting the paint over this beautiful walnut veneer. Oh, it was a tough one. But that little bit of paint on the drawer face is gonna tie nicely into the rest of the cabinet that is being painted. So this was definitely one of those trust the process <laughs> moments for me. As far as the rest of the walnut that I need to address, I'm mixing up custom stain. These are the pulls that I'm using. These were gifted to me by a viewer and the color of the dowel is a little bit darker than the natural color of the walnut. So I need to mix up a stain and I'm using pigments mixed in with some Odie's oil and safer solvent to try to get not necessarily a perfect match, but a match that would be a lot closer. 
I used the colors Brick and Up in Smoke, and I tested a few different variations before I went ahead and mixed the full batch that I used on the rest of the piece. This was just a piece of the scrap veneer that was left over after my repair. The first color was nice, but it wasn't quite dark enough. And same thing with the second one, I needed it to be just a bit darker. And this third little sample here is pretty much as close as I want it to be. Like I said, it doesn't have to be an exact match. I just need it to look like it's close. And I think that's going to do it. So then I went ahead and mixed my big batch. I used the Odiza Super Duper Everlasting Oil mixed with a little bit of safer solvent and then my two pigments and I don't have the, an exact recipe because with the pigments I was literally just adding it and adding it until I got the exact color I needed. And then I went ahead and wiped it on. This is going to apply just like any other Odie's oil where you use a pad to rub it into the wood grain, let it sit for a short bit and then wipe it off. This does have the top coat built right in because of the super duper everlasting oil, but I will do one extra coat of Odie's oil just for some extra protection. And you can see just how beautiful this stain is. It doesn't obscure the wood grain at all, but it really warms it up. I'm using a 180 grit sand pad here just to smooth down the paint before my second coat. And then I need to address the tops of the drawers because the drawers themselves are made of plywood, so I want to hide the plywood. So this water-based stain is just a bit more opaque than the Odie, so that's what I'm using here on the top. Okay, so as far as the handles go, let me tell you, this was my biggest pain in the rear with this project because I kept questioning my choice. So I have these oak handles that I stained with the same Odie's oil, but obviously because they're oak, which is a naturally lighter wood than walnut, they were just a bit too light. So I ended up using some Mohawk toner once the Odie's head dried, and I was able to get it a lot closer. But then I found these at Lee Valley. These are solid walnut poles, and I thought these would be really cool. But I was torn. I've kind of liked the roundness of the first oak handles, so... Anyway, I went back and forth several times with that, and I guess you'll just have to wait and see what I chose in the end. But now it's time to address these wooden guides, particularly the one that was missing. That was my priority. I had this super cool thing sent to me from a viewer. Thank you so much. I've wanted one of these for a while. I'm fairly new to using a table saw, so having something like this that makes it safer for me is a huge deal. So I put that together. This is what I'm going to do. I need to recreate this piece and I have this piece of scrap wood here that I'm going to use to do that. It's all right at the right thickness, it's perfect. And actually, because I despise plywood guides so much, I'm gonna use that board to replace all of the guides in the dresser. But first I wanna show you where this board came from. So every now and then I come across a piece of furniture on Facebook Marketplace or at a thrift store that is just past its prime. This little desk was almost certainly somebody's wood shop project, probably back in the 60s or 70s, and it's just not practical in use anymore. But this is made of almost entirely solid mahogany, which I don't know what school they went to, but we were working with pine in my school. Anyway, this is a perfect piece to break down and re-mill into usable wood. I can use the lumber from this to make hardware, to make repairs on other pieces. As much as it pains me to take something apart as opposed to fixing it, sometimes it's just in the best interest of the piece because then it gets to live on in some other form.
This probably took me about an hour to disassemble and cut everything down, but look at all this amazing mahogany I have to work with. I even kept some of the thinner pieces maybe for replacing veneer. Some of these smaller blocks I can use for glue blocks. Thinking I might make some handles, and then I've got, of course, the, the big main piece that could be used for a nightstand top or a little side table. And this is the stuff that was scrapped. I'm actually going to go through this pile again because I might be able to salvage some further, but totally worth it if you see something that's free or super cheap. Disassemble it, save yourself some money on wood because it is expensive. So there's a few things I need to set up to make these new door glides. First, I have to make sure that my blade is just slightly higher than the wood, and I have to set the width. I took the long board over to the miter saw and cut it down into the lengths that I need. And this is the old guide here. You can see the new cut will be a perfect fit. Using this gripper, I'm just gonna flip one side around here so that the smaller foot will be on the inside. What's nice about this gripper is that it allows you to put pressure toward the fence. It's, it's a great tool and your hands don't end up anywhere near the saw blade. There is a problem though and that is with the riving knife. If I push this along, you can see it'll clear the blade but it will not clear the riving knife. And the reason it's so high on this saw is because this came with a blade guard attached. And while it's always a good idea to use both the riving knife and the blade guard, if you're gonna use one, keep the riving knife. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop it down. You'll see there's two sets of holes here. There's two different heights. And at this lower height, the gripper will now clear the blade and the riving knife. I'm just going to make sure everything is lined up and square before I put this back in. Lock it. And then it's always a good idea to do a little bit of a practice run. Just kind of do the motion of what you're going to do before you turn the table saw on. And it's a nice smooth cut and I'm going to shut the saw off and let the blade come to a stop before I remove anything and then I'm going to cut the next piece. I have six in total to cut so I'm going to zip through this fairly quickly. Learning how to do this is invaluable in this business because you will run into many, many pieces with missing drawer guides and drawer slides. So I need to cut a little notch out of this and to do this, you can use a dado stack. I don't have a dado stack, so I'm just gonna do multiple passes. Now you always wanna move the fence out of the way when you're using the miter gauge here. Otherwise you run a pretty high risk of kickback with the little section in between the fence and the blade getting stuck. So I'm just gonna make multiple passes here and I'm gonna do this on both ends of each piece. And here's what we're left with. So I need to drill some holes, so I just pre-punched. I'm gonna be adding screws instead of the nails that were initially holding the drawer slides in. Screws are just gonna make it a little bit more stable and easier to remove if there ever needs to be a repair or replacement down the road. But you don't want the head of a screw sticking up and catching the underside of the drawer, so I'm countersinking all of these holes. So it's time to clean these up. I'm using a 180 grit sand pad to remove some of the old finish and smooth the edges. I don't want any splintering or any sharp spots. And now it's time to test. You don't want it super loose, but you also don't want it snug. Just a tiny bit of movement is perfect. 
Okay, so I was sent these legs many months ago from a viewer and I'm finally getting a chance to use them. The only problem with using them on this piece is that this hardware, which was sent from another viewer, is a brushed brass and the legs are obviously very shiny gold. So I'm going to alter the color. I'm going to just very lightly scuff with a fine grit and I'm gonna be using a brass spray paint. And this is the result. I'm super happy with it. The color is more in tune with the drawer pulls that I'm gonna be using on the painted parts of the piece. As you can see here, it's a much better color match. After replacing all of the wooden drawer glides, I went ahead and grabbed the Fusion Mineral Paint Beeswax Hemp Oil Combo and brushed it over all of the painted areas. Fusion has its own top coat, but I like using this particular product because it deepens the color a little bit and adds just a little bit of extra protection. So it's time to add the legs now, and this was the paint that I used. I'm quite happy with it. It's the first time using that particular brand, and I just love how this turned out. It's very soft, but still a little bit reflective. It's perfect for what I need. So I'm just going to pre-drill some screw holes here and attach the legs. I mentioned before that you could see some of the gaps in the seams between the pieces of walnut veneer that they used on the drawer faces. So I'm just using these Mohawk graining markers to try to hide that a little bit. You can get these markers in many different colors and they're perfect for applications like this or little touch-ups and even this area here where there's a little bit of the putty. I'm just sort of trying to mimic the wood grain to make that putty blend in a bit more. And a shout out again to Valerie for sending me this awesome ProLift Creeper. So it can be raised like this as a seat, which Nacho clearly approves of, or you can lay it flat. I've been wanting one of these for a while, so thank you so much. I'm in the home stretch now and it's down to final touches. So I'm using some Howard Feed and Wax to give these thirsty drawers a drink. I really, really like this product for this application specifically. It's really, really easy to apply and it makes the wood look great. So as I mentioned earlier, I was a little bit confused about what handles to go with and I kid you not, the day before I finished this piece, I got these in the mail from Pam. Thank you so much for these. This is more the shape that I was kind of picturing in my head. I was considering trying to make these out of walnut, but these particular ones, they come pre-finished, so I'm gonna save these for another piece. But the design itself is definitely something I wanna to try to recreate later on. So these are the products that I used to create this piece. I used Brick Up in Smoke, the Super Duper Everlasting Oil, and the Safer Solvent to make my stain. I painted the piece with Fusion Mineral Paint's new color, Chessler, and put this beeswax finish on top of it. The parts of the drawers that I painted, first I used the vinyl sealer and then the pre-cat lacquer. And on the handles I ended up using, I used the medium brown walnut toner and the dark red walnut toner. This beauty tone metallic paint in the color brass is what I used on the legs. And the Howard Feed and Wax I used inside the drawers and along the new drawer slides that I made. Now one thing I didn't have time to address are these two top drawers. Remember I said they tipped forward? Well you can actually see here there's a chunk of wood missing from the back part of the side. And I'll show you on another drawer what that's supposed to look like there. Instead of cutting down the side of the drawer and adding a new piece in the same shape, which is what I would normally do, because these are top drawers and they get a lot more wear than the other drawers and I'm a little worried it might happen again, I'm actually going to put some pieces of wood up inside underneath the top and the drawer will slide along these pieces and it will help them pull out straight instead of tipping, so it's just another fix for the same problem. Oh, what a journey this has been. There was sweat, there were tears. <laughs> there was a lot of confusion over what to do with the handles and even the legs. I considered maybe building a flat base similar to what they had, but in the end, I'm really happy with how this piece turned out. 
If you enjoy videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. It really helps me out. And every time you click like on a video, it tells YouTube that this video is a decent one and it will show it to more people. If you happen to watch my last video, you'll know that occasionally I do furniture flips for the bunnies where I do a piece of furniture, <laughs> stage it with the bunnies, and then raffle tickets off on the piece and I donate 100% of the proceeds to the rabbit rescue that I help out with. That is what I'm gonna do with this piece. I'm excited that it is going to go toward helping bunnies in need and someone's gonna get a really cool custom piece of furniture. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the reveal.